Good afternoon, good, uh, good evening, uh, maybe also good morning uh, to, to some uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, my name is Silla Sepp, I'm the Director of Operations at MyData Global and uh, I'll host uh, today's meeting, uh, although uh, our focus goes very much to the presenters uh, that uh, have joined us uh, today. Um, before we dive deeper with the topics of today's uh, event, the Mighty Awards uh, 2023 uh, launch event, um, I'll go through uh, over some practicalities. So uh, as you probably got the notification, uh, this meeting is uh, recorded uh, to share this also with others who cannot join us uh, today. Um, we will have some time also uh, to take questions to the uh, presenters as well as uh, uh, for the uh, broader discussion at the end of the, the uh, event, so please make um, use also about uh, the uh, chat function in Zoom um, to raise up any questions and we'll take those also out and uh, to the presenters. Um, I uh, will uh, encourage also active uh, discussion uh, at the end of the meeting with uh, raised hands. So uh, let's uh, be um, use this also as a regular, uh, let's say, uh, active meeting, not ju just as a as a webinar. Um, to introduce also a bit uh, our today's uh, agenda, uh, we have. Um, exciting uh, presenters today with us. Uh, we have the pleasure to have Vivi Latanoya, the chair of the board from MyData Global to, to present uh, the bigger picture around MyData, what it stands for and uh, why is it also important. Um, then we uh, pass on the virtual mic to Kai Kuikanemi, who is the senior advisor at MyData Global, besides uh, many other uh, roles also, um, to take on uh, take us on a journey to, uh, in the MyData model um, and introduce the, the roles of um, operators and data using services. And um, to not make it too abstract or, or conceptual, uh, we also want to make sure that we can look at the practical examples. And for that, we have a presentation from Katrina Dow, who is the founder and CEO of Amico, one of the awardees of the Mided Operator Awards in the past uh, three years. Uh, finally, uh, we will also share the details with you uh, for the MyData Awards uh, 2023 process and, as mentioned, uh, then have time also to uh, answer any of your questions that uh, may have uh, emerged uh, during, the, during the event. But without further ado, and to get on with uh, the topics, I'll hand over to, to Vivi uh, to share um, the, the my data uh, perspective on well data as a as a whole. Um, Vivi, would you like to also take on the uh, screen sharing, or uh, shall I? Uh, Thank you. you. Yes, I have fancy animations, so I want to control those myself. Thank you. Right, please. Uh, so, hey everyone. Um, let me just uh, pull up my uh, screen here and go into slideshow mode. Um, so thank you for the for the intro, Sille, um, and hi everyone, uh, new and old um, in the room. My name is Vivi. I'm serving currently as the chair of the board for for My Data Global, um, and it's it's a real pleasure to to share a few words about My Data uh, in general, My Data, the the organization um, at this uh, really exciting event uh, for the the kind of the new kinds of awards that we've got uh, lined up for today, uh, for this year. So. Um, the, the My Data vision is, is very simple and very profound at the same time. The core idea is that people should be in control of the data about themselves. Um, the, the approach um, that is the human-centric My Data approach, it aims at strengthening digital human rights while opening up new opportunities for businesses to develop innovative personal database services built on mutual trust. And another way of uh, putting this is to say that my data is for fair, sustainable, and prosperous digital societies. Um, we do this through this human-centric approach to personal data, and it's very much driven by the thriving, active, diverse, and inclusive my data community. 
And My Data Global, uh, the organization uh, serves this community uh, as a recognized expertise connector. So My Data Global, uh, the organization promoting My Data, uh, we exist to help the enablers of My Data philosophy, public and private organizations, experts, and individuals to succeed. So we promote and develop the skills, knowledge, and connections of people in the My Data community, and of course, more widely uh, in the digital services industries. Um, and one of the key things that we do and is, is coded in the purpose of our organization is to maintain, develop and promote the MyData Declaration. And the declaration is, is what, what defines our purpose. It is, it is the promotion of these fair, sustainable and prosperous digital societies through a human-centric approach to personal data. And these societies are, are ones where people get value from their data and they get to set the agenda on how it's used. And at the same time, organizations uh, find that the ethical use of data is for them always the most attractive option. Now, we all know we're not there yet. These societies are, are being built as we speak. And what we um, have defined in the My Data Declaration is three key shifts that need to take place uh, for these societies to become uh, more real and present for all. We need to see a shift from just formal rights to actionable rights. We need to see a shift from only data protection to also data empowerment. And third, we need to see a shift from closed to open ecosystems. And my data has been around uh, for a while. We've been on this journey, uh, making these shifts happen um, for, for some time already. The, the first Finnish language white paper on my data was published uh, in 2014. Um, nearly a decade ago already, um, and that itself was the result of uh, some, some years of work, thinking, doing, conversations, ideas uh, that took place. Um, after the second, uh, the, or the, the English language summary of this paper was published in 2015, my data really started gaining uh, international attention as well, and the first my data conference was organized in 2016. And this is where this community around human-centric personal data really becomes self-aware um, and adopts the slogan, make it happen and make it right. Since then, uh, annual conferences have been organized um, and there will be a, a seventh installation um, coming your way in June in Helsinki, uh, which we're all really, really excited about. Um, My Data Global, the um, organization, was founded in 2018, uh, and since then, um, some of the, the key highlights uh, in the history of the organization have been um, the, the publication of the Understanding My Data Operators white paper in 2020, and we'll hear much more about that from, from Kai later on. Uh, we've also um, been a, invited to testify for the European Commission, uh, sorry, the European Parliament uh, on the, the Data Governance Act. Um, and even before then, uh, my data was recognized uh, as one of the movements that promised significant benefits to individuals in the EU data strategy that came out in February of 2020. And my final slide here is just to give you context to, to My Data Global as, a, as an organization. Uh, so we're an international nonprofit. We're headquartered uh, here in Finland, where I sit today as well. As I mentioned, founded in late 2018. And we're a membership-based association with approximately 500 members, including over 100 organizations from over 50 countries. 
There are 15 local hubs on six continents, as well as international thematic groups, uh, one of which is the incredibly energetic MyData Operators Group, uh, where the, the beginnings of the MyData Awards also were. And as I already previewed, and, and I am really quite excited about this, uh, we are the organizer of the leading personal data conference and the My Data 2023 um, edition uh, will be coming your way in uh, late May, early June. Uh, so that's uh, a short intro from myself. Uh, I'll hand over next to um, Silla um, and, and Kai. Thank you, Vivi, uh, and thank you for also outlining the the focus on the really the enablers of of my data, the overall idea to really, as the slogan says, uh, make it uh, make it happen and make it uh, right. Um, while I uh, put on the slides uh, for Guy, I um, will invite Guy already on our virtual stage, uh, maybe to introduce himself uh, uh, directly, um, and uh, meanwhile I'll uh, get on the. Uh, this so hello everybody. Like I mentioned, I'm, I'm Kai Puikkaniemi and I'm currently a senior advisor in my data. Uh, been working in the uh, in the topic for for quite some time, from the early days and uh, and uh, for the last uh, couple of years, uh, co-facilitating uh, the my data operator working group. And uh, today I will be. Uh, especially uh, elaborating the sort of logic and, and focus of why why operators are needed and why we are focusing on developing the operator concept. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So uh, uh, the the declaration and the, the whole principle since the first uh, my data paper we have been focusing on the idea that there are multiple data sources uh, uh, that uh, that actually provide data. Uh, can you, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, and uh, then this data that is produced by different uh, entities can be utilized by many different other organizations. So there is a multiple use of the data. But in order to make this happen in a, in a sort of convenient and human centric way, uh, it is very cumbersome and challenging if in each individual needs to manage both the data sources and data using services and do the purposing and consenting on each of these sites. So uh, we expect that there will be there is a need for for a service uh, that uh, that uh, is uh, providing this kind of capability for the individuals to, to control the data flow, and and this is what we call my data operator. So it is it is the guardian uh, for the individual that enables them to empower the sort of data, data usage and also empowers individuals to use the data by themselves. Next slide, please. Uh, to highlight this, the sort of traditional view on data uh, has been to sort of the same organization, same entities doing the collection, management and the use. And, and data in this kind of uh, way is, is, is sort of, uh, it's either siloed or very much uh, sort of built inside an organization of very, point to point uh, uh, realize the data management flows. But when we look into what's, what has happened already with the API ecosystems, next, next slide please, uh, we clearly see the, see the trend that uh, there will be uh, multiple uh, uh, data using uh, entities. There's a use and reuse of data, but in order to this to happen uh, in, under, uh, under sort of human centric data, Processing, there needs to be consent and transparency for individuals. So how how the reusing takes takes place and the use in in the first place, and uh, so the the operator and the individual is there enabling this kind of reuse of data. Next slide, please. Uh, but um, what is challenging when we move into this, uh, like the principle stage, moving towards open ecosystems. Uh, is that uh, we don't want to make uh, society function in a way that there is one operator uh, that sort of becomes the standard and, and a sort of platform where all this kind of data consenting takes place. But we, we want to see more like uh, an ecosystem where th there can be multiple data sources or there can be multiple data using services. And then individuals can uh, optionally also choose which kind of service or which kind of operator they utilize for, for their own personal data management. And uh, what we have been now then doing in the My Data Operator Working Group is to build uh, interoperability and, uh, and sort of the practice sort of 
establish the concept of the operator in a way that we could achieve this kind of open ecosystem where multiple operators could coexist and collaborate and realize this kind of uh, human-centric open ecosystem for data, data use and data reuse to take place. Uh, for this reason, in order to make the operator interoperability functional and practical, we have uh, developed the award process, uh, which uh, helps operators to sort of uh, align between each other and make the whole operator functionality in general more broadly known. Next slide, please. But uh, the operator concept uh, shouldn't be considered as, as anything very particular and specific. Uh, we are uh, linked to many other uh, uh, projects and endeavors which uh, have been realizing the similar challenge or similar possibility in the data ecosystems. And we have been since the beginning uh, uh, sort of uh, connected and, and developed together the concept of my data operator with many other uh, uh, organizations who have a similar passion and similar direction. And, and the same idea can be seen also with many other uh, titles such as intermediaries or personal data stores or uh, information pediaries or personal data cooperatives. And now lately uh, uh, we are talking a lot about data intermediaries uh, that comes through the Data Governance Act in the European Commission. And, and especially we are focusing on the development of the data intermediary model within the data spaces uh, ecosystem model that the European uh, Union is currently promoting a lot. But ultimately, uh, we think that it is the same concept and the same service behind all of these concepts uh, with some nuances uh, that might be important, but we try to build a comprehensive model which, which sort of uh, functions and, and builds uh, interoperability between these service providers. And, and for that reason, the My Data Operator uh, working group is focused and, and building the award process. Uh, while doing this, uh, next slide please, we have been sketching uh, this kind of uh, reference model which uh, takes care of the all the necessary components uh, that uh, are needed in order to this kind of service to take place. Uh, in the white paper, you can refer and, and see what each of these modules uh, contains. Uh, but uh, when we look into the next uh, previous slides, uh, different concepts, these all, all entities uh, are pretty much the same and exist uh, uh, in, in the other concepts also. Uh, through the award process, we have been fine tuning and evolving what is the content of each of these modules. And in the future, we will be further on uh, continuing this process. Uh, but when you are applying for my data award, uh, this is very much also the content of the award process uh, for the operator side of the award uh, to sort of uh, describe what, what is your approach in each of these uh, reference model functional elements. Uh, again, in the future, we will be future on uh, sort of developing the interoperability within each of these functional uh, element, as well as the overall ecosystem model. So how the governance uh, support for the ecosystem takes place and, and what is needed in order the business uh, models to actually function in this kind of open ecosystem. Uh, next slide. So uh, in order to see in more detail uh, about the uh, operator uh, concept, uh, you can find it from the publications and, and also please uh, uh, contact us to be part of the My Data Operator uh, Slack discussions. Uh, you, you will be invited, of course, after the award process there, but you can also from our Slack find, find connection to us and, and also more up-to-date information about the different activities that are, that are taking place uh, around the operator uh, work. Thank you for listening, and, and I hope to hear many interesting questions from you uh, today. Thanks a lot, Guy. I don't see any um, questions raising up in the in the chat that, uh, at the moment, but if there is anything coming up and you haven't had the chance yet, uh, you can also indicate that uh, with a raised hand, and we can give you the, the floor for, for that, just to give a moment for for the participants to react. 
if not, uh, then let's uh, move on right away also with uh, the, the practical examples to put uh, uh, the concept around operators and data using services uh, into a certain uh, context. Um, actually, I've seen now a question uh, whether we are also working with the European Commission and the European data spaces. Um, yes, we are, but uh, Guy, would you like to also add on to, to that in the context, perhaps uh, maybe with the um, intermediaries or operators? Yeah, so brief, uh, brief comment. Uh... Uh, on that, so so for example, we are uh, involved in uh, data spaces support center activity, which is a very in the very heart of the European data spaces. So it's the uh, sort of coordination center where uh, all the different data spaces work will be supported, and uh, and we have been uh, preparing for this activity for quite a while, and now it kick started in the October, and and in the, in this work we are uh, very much focusing on aligning. Uh, the data spaces blueprint so that it, it, it's uh, sort of compatible with the human centric personal data management. Uh, we are working closely with uh, Gaia X and IDSA for, for uh, making that, that sort of big vision happen since the European data spaces model is uh, originally very much uh, sort of B2B data, data exchange driven. But, um, but that is very much the activity that, that we are ongoing. And, uh, and for example, we, we can tell much about the other activities that are taking place uh, towards European Commission. So the data spaces is not the only part. There is a lot of things like we mentioned about the Data Governance Act and the policy involved influence also. But but yes, this is this is what something that we are very much focusing at the moment. Thank you, Guy. All right, um, as uh, mentioned already, let's move forward uh, then also with uh, practical examples. Um, and uh, for that, we have uh, a presentation from Katrina Dow. Um, she's the founder and CEO of, of Miko, as mentioned. Uh, Miko is also a previous awardee uh, for the My Data Operators in uh, already from 2020 to, um, to last year. Unfortunately, Katrina couldn't make it uh, to, um, to this meeting today with us, but she was uh, uh, sent us uh, currently her recording. Um, so let me navigate back uh, to that um, and share this uh, with um, uh, from there. So please. Hi, everyone. My name is Katrina Dow and I'm the founder and CEO of Miko. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person today for the kickoff of uh, the My Data Operator Awards, but I would love to just spend the next 10 minutes um, exploring the My Data Operator human-centric infrastructure stack. So what does that mean? That means what is the kind of technology that would be required um, to become a My Data Operator? Or for those in, that are working in the EU or focused on the Data Governance Act new intermediary status, which connects a data holder with a data service, always acting in the interest of the data subject, the individual. So we're going to look very quickly at what that stack includes, what those core components are and how they map to the My Data Operator requirements, and more importantly, what kind of applications they enable. So a little bit about Miko to start off. Our mission is to put people in control of their personal data and digital assets with privacy, security and convenience built in. We focus on unlocking the power of permissioned personal data and digital assets and specifically working with enterprise startups, not for profits, so that they can allow their customers to securely access, control and exchange their data. Uh, we're very con um, concerned around that balance between uh, meeting data compliance, also reducing costs, but more importantly, helping organisations evolve their applications towards um, web three, the spatial web, improving UX, and also using our platform um, secure value exchange to start developing personal identity and data ecosystems. So let's start at that application layer. What's so critical if we want to be able to provide trusted applications is that we build the trust in. So trust is going to be a key enabler. Um, and one of this is where I think the whole focus of my data is and human centric design is saying that if we want to be able to deliver sustainable outcomes across financial services, mobility, health, education, 
public administration, we've got to make sure that that trust is um, right at the heart of things. Uh, and what we're seeing more and more, as you'll see in some of the applications, startups, enterprise, financial services, government are now more and more focused on how they can bring this kind of human centric capability to their stakeholders, their, which are their citizens, their employees, the students, patients, the people they serve. Um, and then to also be able to uh, enable their partners um, to build ecosystems around that capability. And from an infrastructure point of view, from my data operators, we need to be thinking of how we support on-prem solutions, cloud solutions, and increasingly in Web3, decentralized distributed solutions. And we believe the key enabler for that aligns completely with uh, the My Data thesis around human-centered infrastructure, focusing on identity, security, privacy, governance, and importantly, what are going to be the new business models or the new value generating models of the future. And how we do that is with our platform, Secure Value Exchange, or SVX for short, um, which is a series of modules that allow our partners, uh, startups, government, financial uh, services, enterprise, not-for-profits, to build a my data centric solution. Um, and we mapped all of those components back to the core parts of the my data operator requirement, governance, identity, permission, service, um, and data model management, value exchange, and then personal data storage and transfer with logging and accountability. So what you'll see in the next few slides is going to be um, some of the wonderful applications that have been built on top of this stack. Um, and most importantly to point out is the diversity of those applications. And what you'll see on each of these slides is a different combination of those components to show how different applications bring those capabilities to life. So the first, let's start in Australia with a wonderful startup called My Life Capsule. And My Life Capsule is focused on enabling families to manage their digital administration in a secure peer-to-peer -peer way with other family members, but also the service providers that they trust. Um, so their focus is on that secure storage, secure sharing, um, and secure collaboration. Then uh, to Belgium, to uh, a wonderful not-for-profit um, applica uh, application that's been started by HEDA, a not-for-profit here in Belgium, focusing on families, particularly children zero to seven, and building secure media sharing um, with two applications, a parental control app, um, and then a media player for children that allows young children to have a wonderful immersive digital experience without ever putting any of that digital content um, at risk by being um, on the web, but more importantly, being able to leave a child with that content without being concerned of ads or tracking or algorithms or content that has not been um, mediated and approved by a parent. Next up, um, also here in Belgium, three of the retail banks here in Belgium, KBC, KBC Brussels and CBC. Um, uh, KBC won best banking app in the world last year, which is a fantastic um, acknowledgement to the value that they bring to their customers. And one of the applications that sits within that ecosystem is Miko's um, vault and data sharing capability, peer-to-peer -peer secure exchange of data. And that's delivered um, here in this market in four languages. Back to Australia, Nexia Wealth Connect, uh, that has, again, a collaborative uh, vault and peer-to-peer -peer platform that enables um, advisors in the accounting and financial management space to work directly with their customers on everything from setting up a trust right through to lodging their tax returns with making all of that um, very sensitive financial and legal data, first of all, secure, um, and then only made available um, through direct collaboration. So removing the need to um, copy and upload and use the internet for exchanging um, very sensitive uh, financial and, um, and corporate 
planning information. Um, and this was very um, helpful, obviously, during COVID when a lot of those advisors were not able to be in the office, but needed to continue to work in a very secure way with their customers. Uh, also in Australia, let's jump now to identity and verified credentials. Um, and this is a collaboration together with FPOS, um, who have created Connect ID um, and Queensland Government to help workforce management, actually the onboarding of engineers using self-sovereign identity and being able to increase productivity in terms of how fast these um, people were able to onboard and get to work, but also this secure, cryptographically provable, verified credentials as to the source of the information, excluding the need for people to photocopy things, upload email. Um, and so uh, if you're interested, there's a little more about this case study on our website. And also in Australia, Vela working with website, uh, sorry, working with workforce management around um, the provision of credentials associated with workforce management, learning and development. So they're doing some really wonderful things in helping uh, employees collect those and have the portability of that learning um, across their career. And then last but not least, um, really focusing on Web3, some work we've been doing together with a HBAR Foundation and Hedera in bringing a visualisation layer to um, uh, ESG tokens, specifically carbon offset, to be able to see everything in the life cycle from when that carbon token is first minted as it moves and its provenance through its life cycle. And why? Because it's very important to start to bring trust into that market um, and also transparency. Most important thing I'd like to wrap up with is the importance of open standards to ensure interoperability. Um, we're members of the Decentralised Identity Foundation, OpenID, uh, being key collaborator, collaborators across um, a lot of work around verified credentials, the work that's being done with W3C and also members of the Solid Working Group here in Belgium. But what I would like to say is um, standards, interoperability, portability needs to be at the heart of any solution. Um, and I think without that, we're not going to be able to build uh, applications at scale. So that's it from me. Um, if you would like to reach out, there's an email there on the screen. Um, hopefully you can see that QR code. Um, if, the, if you've got any questions or you'd like to chat, um, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I would like to wish you every success with your application um, and um, be already looking forward to seeing what new capabilities um, will be awarded the My Data Operator status for this year. Good luck and look forward to hearing from you and seeing you soon. Bye. Thank you, uh, Katrina, for sending us uh, the presentation and uh, hearing from from all of the work done. Let me try to escape uh, the presentation and move back to, to the main one. Um, there is already appreciation in the in the chat for all of the work done um, at, uh, at Miko. Uh, so we'll send also Katrina all of uh, the, the good words uh, from you. If you have any questions to Katrina about the microservices or so, uh, please also put it into the chat. Uh, we can also uh, send these over um, and potentially then uh, try to also get back to, to you afterwards um, to, your, uh, to your email. Um, what is uh, most important also from the presentation that uh, uh, Katrina shared with us was that uh, in, on one hand, uh, the Miko as an enabler is taking the role of the operator that Guy uh, presented earlier, but then on the, uh, the diversity of different kinds of application that it really actually provides uh, or enables so that um, uh, individuals could actually benefit from those um, and those uh, entities. Uh, that develop those um, solutions together are taking then the role of the data using service. So hopefully um, these practical examples also uh, give a bit of uh, more context of what it could be uh, for, uh, for in, this, um, in this data ecosystems. Moving uh, further then, uh, let's also uh, share with you um, the uh, 
for some details and background uh, for the My Data Awards process um, that is officially now also open. Um, and uh, I'll take the, the floor for, for that. Um, the bigger context for the My Data Awards is that uh, we have uh, run uh, the awards uh, now for three consecutive re uh, years, then focusing on uh, the uh, particular to the operators. Um, and to date, um, we have um, in total 41 service providers uh, who have been um, awarded uh, with the operator status and uh, you see the awardees from last year um, on this slide uh, with their um, logos. If you're interested in particularly uh, their services um, and, uh, and the descriptions also that they provided us, uh, uh, you get access to their application also uh, through our website. Um, my Data Awards has become a really uh, valued brand, and as Vivi mentioned earlier in, in uh, her presentation, My Data is there to uh, also support the enablers of the My Data idea and philosophy uh, and recognize them. So um, this My Data Awards uh, process and the award uh, itself is there to exactly accomplish that. So if you're also working on um, um, enabling the My Data idea and philosophy, uh, we also want to recognize you. Uh, next, um, what we have uh, planned for uh, this year is that uh, beyond uh, the operator award, we will also add on one more uh, category, which is the My Data in Practice. And that will focus particularly on the role of data using services. The same, uh, process is the same for both, um, but there will be two uh, categories. Um, the questionnaire is also largely the same um, with complementary category specific questions, which means that um, the operator um, um, applicants will have to um, answer some further questions about the reference model and uh, some particular particularities uh, that are um, tied with the operator role um, and uh, data using service uh, services who are applying for the My Data in Practice um, award will um, need to describe how are they putting the My Data principles into, into practice. Why to apply for that? Um, the one uh, biggest uh, reason for that is to demonstrate uh, that you're taking an ethical approach to personal data, trying to make it human centric and uh, putting the My Data Declaration into use. Um, this way you can stand out in the sector of both for your partners as well as uh, users, gain an edge, um, uh, also um, really join the um, my data movement of uh, of ethical personal data companies, etc. Um, so this is a, a really a, a opportunity to make yourself uh, seen. Um, to share also a bit uh, of about the each individual category and uh, the operator um, award um, is recognizing the operators of human-centric infrastructure for personal data management and sharing. This can be both as well uh, uh, that you're actually providing the service itself, um, as well as providing the technology for other organizations to actually uh, provide the, um, the operator service as such. Um, so this way you can, uh, the, through the operator um, uh, application, you will demonstrate how you're putting the uh, human-centric criteria into, into practice that is uh, further elaborated in the Understanding My Data Operators white paper that uh, Guy also mentioned earlier, where to uh, see and download uh, that. We'll also add uh, all of the links uh, to you in the, in the chat later on. Um, furthermore, um, all of the applicants need to demonstrate how you create agency for the uh, individual, um, how you also, how the data flows and value flows in the ecosystem, um, and how um, you plan or have the potential to be interoperable with uh, data sources, data using services, um, and operators uh, itself. What is the change from last year is that um, we have made it simpler. Um, so we've uh, tried to limit that, uh, also excluding uh, the questions uh, around the European uh, Union's uh, DG Data Governance Act uh, that um, was part of the process last year um, and um, trying to also make the uh, process a little bit simpler. 
Guy mentioned about the, the reference model. You see that on the, on the right. Um, operators will need to then also share a bit more information about each of the, um, um, uh, the functional elements, we call them, whether um, you are putting these uh, into practice, how important they are in your service. And based on that, um, also may need to share a little bit more um, information about the functional elements. The second category, the Mighty Time Practice, uh, recognizes and as mentioned, uh, personal database services offered to individuals, uh, taking the role then as data using services. And there um, we ask um, to demonstrate the implementation of the Mighty Data principles in a single use case. So uh, you seeing presenting a live case also that is already provided to the to the individuals. Um, Applying organizations, of course, need to also show how their services um, actually uh, bring value to the individuals as well as uh, uh, has the uh, potential to inter interoperate with data sources, other data using services and operators in the ecosystem again. Um, the, just to quickly mention also that all of the six principles that will be uh, part of the application uh, are the human-centric control of personal data, individual as the point of integration, individual empowerment, portability, access and reuse, uh, fifth, transparency and accountability, and last but not least, um, interoperability. So again, um, applicants will rate uh, to what extent uh, uh, you're putting the, the particular principle into, into practice and then uh, uh, need to provide further information on how this is done also in practical terms. Um, a few words also about the process. Um, so the applica uh, applications are open as of yesterday um, and uh, you can um, draft um, and work on the application uh, for the next month or so. Um, the application form will close on the uh, 27th of February at uh, midnight uh, UTC time. And um, uh, in order to be considered for the award, you need to submit it, uh, not only to draft and work on it, but also finally to um, submit it. There will be a process fee also for, uh, for the award, um, award process, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, after uh, the applications have uh, been reviewed by the uh, review panel, um, all of the applicants will have also the chance to uh, present themselves uh, in an online meeting to the, to the judges, uh, and we will start to coordinate that already during the um, application uh, writing phase, seeing uh, who will be there to uh, really interested to go forward with, that, with the process. Uh, during that uh, presentation, uh, you can clarify some of the questions that uh, the review panel might have, as well as really show uh, perhaps more uh, some of the uh, yeah, services more or use cases a little bit more in depth. Um, and uh, the answers of uh, the, the presentations will be also considered in the, in the judging uh, phase for the final decisions. All this uh, said, um, we will try to uh, uh, review and uh, conclude uh, the award process in March. Um, already uh, announced the award awardees to the applicants themselves a little bit earlier, but to the wider public, um, these will be announced um, on the 23rd of March in The Hague uh, in Netherlands, where um, this will be part of a larger event uh, for Data Spaces Symposium organized together by colleagues in the, in the Data Spaces uh, landscape, particularly the Data Spaces Support Center. Um, and as mentioned earlier, uh, for the already previous uh, awardees, also this year's applications will be then also made uh, public to the, um, to the world later on, uh, uh, on the website. Um, about the fees um, as well, um, as mentioned, uh, to be considered for the, um, for the award, uh, you need to also pay a process fee to cover the cost for the award process, which uh, particularly um, um, is directed to staff, as well as uh, some of the specific tools and, and services needed for managing the, the process. And uh, the re review panel itself is uh, um, working um, and uh, contributing to the, um, uh, to the process on a voluntary basis. This said, the process itself, uh, or the, the fees itself, don't guarantee uh, the award um, if other uh, criteria are not satisfied. And uh, what we also want to make sure is that if you're unsure about uh, whether you're actually um, 
really taking the role as the operator as uh, as uh, described in the white paper all the data using service um, then to try to um, draft out the application of it let's check this also with uh, with the team and um, if um, after all um, the our service itself is actually not uh, really taking the role uh, and there might have been some confusions then we also um, don't um, uh, yeah, uh, we will uh, return the, the payment to the to the applicant, uh, whether uh, if they don't uh, move forward to the live presentation uh, phase of the um, of the award process, just to be also welcoming and not to um, yeah um, uh, make the the barrier too too, too high. Um, in terms of the fees itself, it's tied to the um, uh, organizational membership fee of My Data Global, um, and it's one third of that. All of applicants uh, need to be also My Data Global members, and you can do that already today. Uh, if you're not already, um, we will also share the link uh, to the chat uh, where you can uh, do that. If you're a nonprofit or a public sector organization, you can uh, get the even further 50% discount for, uh, for the fee. With that, um, the only next step that I have to share is to already go to the application platform. Um, you can navigate through the application and try to see how it looks and feels, what it uh, is actually asked. And if you uh, uh, don't want to uh, go to the application form, then we have also uh, the um, uh, questionnaire uh, written out in a document so uh, to um, review and start planning your your um, application and share that uh, in, a, in a moment as well. So do share uh, this, these news, uh, news uh, with your colleagues. Uh, we encourage you to apply for the award, whether you're an, uh, taking the role of the operator or a data using service. And if you're taking uh, as a person uh, the role of the individual and know that you are have been receiving a great uh, service uh, uh, by a particular uh, organization uh, that is human centric uh, then do also um, yeah share this uh, with with us or, or uh, to the organization directly that uh, they would um, apply for the my data awards uh, this year with that, um, we are in the time of taking also questions, um, and I will go to the Zoom to um, chat to, to see if there's any questions that have uh, emerged. Meanwhile, if not, um, then also do use the raise hand function in, in Zoom uh, to give you the floor if you have any, any questions or comments about the awards process. Don't see any question uh, for the... There's a hand up from Dixon. Right, sorry, I was reading the chat. Dixon, please. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, one uh, questions from uh, Personium, because uh, uh, since it's uh, open source, um, the Fujitsu already applied for the um, op operator status, but I was wondering if there's another NGO that want to use Personium as, um, as the platform to create um, workshop materials and then this workshop will be kind of like launching regularly in 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 certain country in that case can that ngo apply for the um um my data service if if, if they want to so it become kind of a service to to, to serve the citizens uh, to teach them or allow them to 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 participate in the workshops so if, it, if the workshop is actually a digital tool using data uh, from um, different sources, potentially mm -hmm. also using the personium as the operator for that, um, then it could also be considered as the data using service for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, so it really oh. depends on the particular context of, of the actual service. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Th thank you. Because um, Charlie and I has been thinking about using personium as, as a workshop material in, in Cameroon. So... Um, he might be interested to to uh, to become the, the, one of the um, my data service, but, but I have to talk to him. Yeah, thank you. Indeed, uh, it's, uh, if it's a, a digital service uh, using data, mm -hmm. uh, that then uh, for sure. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments to the awards process? OK, 
If not, I don't see any raised hands nor questions in the in the chat. Then I do hope that uh, uh, the process is uh, very clear uh, and uh, uh, exciting, um, and uh, you were already busy uh, looking through the questionnaire for each of those categories. Um, as mentioned, um, to um, uh, follow up and please also share any. Uh, potential applicants uh, with uh, with us if you're not applying yourself and uh, we move uh, further from from there um, i see a um, um, request to say a few words from demo so please go ahead thanks a lot uh, thanks a lot sila uh so I mean, first of all uh, uh just wanted to say about uh the awarding event, uh, in case uh, it hasn't reached you yet, the uh, the registration for this event uh, um, is now open. The Data Space Symposium uh, and Deep Dive Space, and we are just seeing what other program uh, related to my data we might have there. As Sila mentioned earlier, uh, uh, um, it's uh, at the Hague uh, um, in the Netherlands. Um, at the end, at the end of the the, the period, uh, uh, so on the twenty third of March, um, but please do have a look at that. Uh, there are opportunities for partnering also, if uh, if that is of interest, or or uh, uh, being an exhibitor. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, it's not the end of the story. We, as you know, many of the operators uh, uh, um, are highly present um, at the My Data Conference yearly, uh, and this year's uh, conference is on the thirty first May. 1st of June so so really looking forward to uh forward to seeing you also in person there um and that's uh yeah looking forward to seeing uh hopefully us uh, we will get a whole bunch more uh operators and of course now the in practice uh, awards is something that's quite uh, interesting hopefully the operators can tease uh a few of your 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 clients your customers the services that are using uh, your services uh, um, to also apply uh, to get uh, get momentum for for us all. Thank you, Demo. If you could uh, share also the registration uh, link and uh, maybe um, further information about the symposium yeah. in the chat, that would be um, would be great. That's yes, good. give me a second, and I will do exactly that. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, um, you reach out to us if you have any further questions throughout the next weeks. Uh, we're happy to support you during the application phase. And uh, what more than uh, thank you and uh, good luck in your um, applications. Thank you. Bye bye.